When your team loses the Super Bowl, it's easy to look ahead to the following season and say, there's always next year. But what if there isn't? What if losing the Super Bowl means that your chances of returning to the big game are even slimmer the following year? Football fans call this the Super Bowl hangover. But is it a real thing? Setting aside the New England Patriots dynasty who have appeared in back-to-back -back Super Bowls three times, when you look at the last decade, it seems like there could be something to this theory. The San Francisco 49ers won only six games in 2020 after a close loss to Kansas City in Super Bowl 54. The Rams finished only 9-7 and seven after losing Super Bowl 53 to the Patriots, despite their quarterback, head coach, and star defender all returning. The Falcons finished third in their division in 2017 after losing Super Bowl 51 in historic fashion. They secured the sixth seed in the playoffs but lost in the divisional round. All of this could be anecdotal, but Thankfully, a couple NFL fans did the research to find out if numbers could back it up. In 2018, Jonathan Yeager, an engineer by trade, posted on Reddit, quote, are Super Bowl hangovers a legitimate trend in the NFL? Yeager broke down the records of all Super Bowl winners and losers. He found that Super Bowl losers lose on average two games the year following the big game. He did the same math for Super Bowl winners, finding that they lost about the same amount of games as the losers did the following year. Yeager concluded that there just wasn't enough evidence for Super Bowl hangovers. Jason Pauley took the study even further in a Medium post from 2018. Super Bowl 51, where the Falcons gave up that 28 to three lead. And I was thinking to myself, how does a team or a person come back from that? And I was thinking of that in terms of the Super Bowl hangover. I was like, there's no way the Falcons are getting back next year. That's sort of what got me thinking and digging into the data to prove that there is a Super Bowl hangover. Polly agreed that the Super Bowl winners and losers had similar outcomes the following season. He also broke down the type of game and score differential and how that affected the next year's results. What's the difference if you lose a very close game versus a blowout versus a one score or two score game? If you lose a Super Bowl in the last two minutes of the game, or if you lose a Super Bowl by three scores or more, you're missing the playoffs next year at about 30%. It's virtually the same. He did find that Super Bowl winning and losing teams made the playoffs more often than the rest of the field. The upshot of all of this? The average Super Bowl team wins 12 and a half games a year. So what I did was I compared Super Bowl teams playoff hit and miss rate to all of the 12 and 13 win teams that didn't make the Super Bowl. And I thought that would be a really good comparison. What do those other 12 and 13 win teams do the next season? Well, they miss the playoffs 49% of the time. So Super Bowl teams, which average 12 and 13 wins a season, still go to the playoffs at a much higher rate than 12 and 13 win teams that don't make the Super Bowl. I thought that was a big moment of clarity there that really kind of sealed the deal for me. Winning a Super Bowl is really hard. Losing a Super Bowl, or rather making it to the big game at all, is also really hard. Statistically speaking, there doesn't seem to be a lot of evidence supporting the Super Bowl hangover theory. The day after the Super Bowl hangover at work, though, all of the evidence says that is very real.